These are the answers to the practice quiz on the mole and mole conversions. Number one, fill in each blank with either a number or a unit. The units should be either AMU or grams. Well, we start with one atom of chromium. The periodic table tells us that the atomic mass is 52.00, so that's our number. And the unit has to be AMU because we are referring to a single atom of chromium that's very small. Atoms and molecules are measured in AMUs. So for this next example, silane, we have silicon, 28.09, plus four times the mass of hydrogen. That gives us a total of 32.122, again, AMUs, because we're measuring individual things like atoms and molecules, very small. But now we have one mole of hydrazine. That's gonna be the formula mass in grams. The formula mass of hydrazine is calculated by two times the mass of nitrogen plus four times the mass of hydrogen. 32.052 grams equals one mole of hydrazine. Number two is asking us to fill in either an amount of substance, atoms, molecules, or moles, and a number which would be either number of molecules, number of grams. So in our first example, number 2a, it says the mass in grams. So we're gonna look at mole. A mole of methylamine has a mass of 31.06 grams. I added the atomic masses of carbon, nitrogen, and five times the mass of hydrogen. 31.06 grams equals one mole of methylamine. Now we have molecules, the number of molecules in a mole, that's Avogadro's number. So not the periodic table, just knowing 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole of anything. And then finally we have a mass in AMU, that's an individual atom of palladium, and the mass would come from the periodic table, 106.42 AMUs in a single atom of palladium. In number three, we have some true-false statements. The first one, Avogadro's number represents the number of particles in one mole, that's true. But for the second one, one molecule of water is not going to have a mass of 18.016 grams. That's one mole of water. Grams is a much larger mass unit. If it was an individual molecule of water, it would have been 18.016 AMUs. For letter C, a mole of chlorine does contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, but those particles are not atoms of chlorine, those particles are molecules of chlorine. One single molecule of chlorine contains two chlorine atoms. So therefore, one mole of chlorine contains two times Avogadro's number of individual chlorine atoms. So correct answer for number 3C is double Avogadro's number, 1.20 times 10 to the 24th. And then finally, we do use AMUs for small materials, but this says one mole, so it's going to be 16.042 grams equals one mole of methane gas. In number four, we have to calculate the mass of copper that contains the same number of atoms as five grams of calcium. First, let's convert five grams of calcium into moles. So the periodic table tells us that one mole of calcium has a mass of 40.08. Then we can convert moles of calcium into number of atoms using Avogadro's number. And we get 7.51 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of calcium. That same number of atoms of copper would have to be converted back into grams of copper. So we're gonna use Avogadro's number to convert from atoms to moles, and then we'll use the periodic table and discover that one mole of copper has a mass of 63.55 grams. So our final answer is 7.93 grams of copper. Now there's a different way you could have done this problem and still get the same answer, 7.93 grams. Here's how you might have done this. If in fact the two samples contain the same number of atoms, it should make sense that they would also have the same number of moles. So once I convert from grams of copper of calcium into moles of calcium, 
I can recognize that the ratio of moles of these two elements is one to one, and then just go right back to grams using the atomic mass of copper. So what I did here in this calculation is I avoided Avogadro's number because I recognized that the same number of moles was present. I still get the same answer, 7.93 grams of copper. Number five is asking us to calculate which of the following samples contains the greatest number of molecules, or is it moles? Well, it doesn't matter. Whichever chemical contains the greatest number of moles will also be the greatest number of molecules. The first thing I'm going to do is to figure out the molar mass of these four substances. So for phosphine, pH3, 33.994 is what I get from the formula mass. For carbon monoxide, it's 28.01. For butane, C4H10, it works out to be 58.12. Then finally, for sulfur dioxide, I get a formula mass of 64.06. .06. I have to go from grams to moles. So starting with letter A, 10 grams of pH3 phosphine is going to equal 0 0.294 moles. So I'll go ahead and write that down for part A. For part B, the carbon monoxide, the calculation for the moles, it works out to be 0 0.714. So that's the answer for B. And then for part C, we're converting 30 grams of butane into moles and we get 0 0.516 moles of butane. And finally for part D, 40 grams of sulfur dioxide is equivalent to 0 0.624 moles. So my correct answer that has the largest number of moles, which would also be the largest number of molecules, is B. In number six, we have to convert from particles into grams. That's a two-step conversion. So first, I'm going to convert from particles to moles by dividing by Avogadro's number. And when I do that for part A, I get 0 0.0664 moles of iodine. For part B, I get 0 0.133 moles of fluorine. When I do that calculation for part C, I get 1.66 moles of oxygen. And then finally, the conversion from particles to moles, I get 9.997 moles of hydrogen. Now, in terms of the greatest mass, we still have to use the periodic table to finish off this problem. Just because letter D has the largest number of moles does not necessarily mean that it's going to have the largest mass. And even though of these four substances, iodine is the heaviest, it is also the smallest number of moles. So we have to work this out to just verify what the correct answer is. Okay, so starting with iodine, we're converting moles into grams. And we do this by looking up the atomic mass of iodine and multiplying by 2 on the periodic table. We end up with a final answer of 16.9 grams of iodine. Then we do the same calculation for fluorine, oxygen, and hydrogen. So we get the molar mass off the periodic table by multiplying the atomic mass by 2. We get 5.05 grams of fluorine do that calculation for oxygen and we end up getting 53.1 grams of oxygen and finally for hydrogen which is only a molar mass of 2.016 it comes in at 20.1 grams so the sample that has the greatest mass turned out to be C the oxygen in number seven we're looking for the formula mass or the molar mass of each compound and the correct answer is the pair of compounds that has the same molar mass. If we look at the numbers for BF3 and CAF2, those numbers are not equivalent. 67.81 versus 78.08. I'm just showing my work on how I calculated the molar mass. So the correct answer is not A. With sodium bromide and potassium chloride, those numbers are 102.89 versus 74.55. So letter B 
is also not the correct answer. Letter C, those molar mass values are 44.094 and 44.01. So that is our correct answer. And just to confirm, the reason why letter D is incorrect, we have molar mass values of 122.55 for potassium chlorate versus 85.00 for sodium nitrate. In number eight, this is a conceptual question and we can eliminate some choices based on the fact that we do not know the identity of the element. So we cannot convert from grams to moles or moles to grams, so therefore the correct answer cannot be A. And letter C says if you know the moles, you can figure out the molar mass, we have no idea what the substance is. So the correct answer is based on Avogadro's number you can convert from moles to atoms and atoms to moles. You don't have to know the identity of the element. Correct answer is B. And you can see that D cannot be correct because again, the atomic mass would be too specific. We don't have enough information to figure out the atomic mass. If we just knew the number of atoms, it would still be the identity is a mystery to us. All right, so now we come to number nine, the first example of a calculation in which involves two steps. First we're going to go from particles to moles and then moles to grams. So we'll convert these formula units into moles by using Avogadro's number, the number of particles in one mole. And then we have to figure out how many grams of aluminum sulfate there are in one mole. Remember that's two aluminums, three sulfurs, and 12 oxygens a grand total of 342.14. That's the molar mass of aluminum sulfate. And if we do this math, our final answer, rounded off to three significant figures, is 4.98 grams. All right, this is still number 9B. We're going to convert from 5.4 kilograms of sulfur hexafluoride into molecules. Let's go from kilograms to grams. Using our knowledge of the metric system, there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. Let's go from grams to moles, and that would be one sulfur plus six fluorines. 146.06 is the molar mass of this compound. And then finally, Avogadro's number gets us from moles to molecules. Rounding our answer off to two significant figures, 2.2 times 10 to the 25th molecules of sulfur hexafluoride. Okay, in number 10, we have a substance that has a mass of 9.04 grams and it contains 3.69 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. This ratio is not grams per mole. It is grams per molecule. We would like to figure out the number of grams in one mole. So let's go ahead and cross off molecules using Avogadro's number. And then with one mole on the bottom, if we do this math, we'll get our molar mass, grams per mole. It works out to be 147, rounded off to three sig figs. So that is our answer for part A. And we're gonna need to use that for figuring out the identity of the mystery element X. So 147 grams per mole. If we know that the formula is C3H5X3, and we know that that's 147 grams per mole. If we look at just the carbon, it's 12.01 times three. Hydrogen, 1.008 times five. And then X, the identity of the mystery element, its molar mass, times three. So 41.07 is the math for what I know, plus three X equals 147. When we solve for X, X equals 35.31. A quick glance on the periodic table tells us that the most likely identity of this mystery element is chlorine because the mass is around 35. Number 11 requires us to write a balanced chemical equation for the combustion of propanol. Propanol is C3H8O. It reacts with oxygen as O2 and it produces carbon dioxide and water. We can go ahead and balance our carbon atoms by putting a three in front of the carbon dioxide. We can balance our hydrogen atoms by putting a four in front of the water. And now we have a total of six plus four. There's 10 oxygen atoms on the right. 
we need there to be 10 oxygen atoms on the left. So therefore, the fractional coefficient of 9 halves, or 4.5, will balance the equation. To get rid of that fraction, we can multiply each coefficient by 2. And the final coefficients would be 2, 9, 6, and 8. OK, so now that we are looking at a conversion, this time we're not starting with grams of propanol. We're starting with milliliters of propanol. So how do we go from milliliters to grams? Well, they've given us the density. So density is going to be grams on top and one milliliter on the bottom. Then we'd go from grams to moles using the information on the periodic table. The molar mass of propanol would be 60.094. And then finally, molecules using Avogadro's number. So correct answer for part B is 2.01 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of propanol. And that was rounded off to three significant figures based on the measurement of 25.0. In part C, we have to calculate the molecules of oxygen that were consumed. Let's remember our balanced chemical equation. There is a 2 to 9 ratio between molecules of propanol and molecules of oxygen. So there are nine molecules of oxygen reacting with two molecules of propanol. That ratio gives us our conversion factor. Correct answer, rounded off to three significant figures, 9.05 times 10 to the 23rd. In part D, you're doing the same kind of thing, only now we're trying to get to carbon dioxide. You're still going to use the same number of molecules of propanol that you had calculated in part B, but this time the ratio would be six to two, or you could say three over one, that's fine. And when you do that math, you get your answer, rounded off to three sig figs, 6.03 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide produced. Now our final question is sort of a reminder of things you learned before, and that is, how do I calculate the percentage of carbon by mass if I'm given a formula? So the way we do this, is we divide the mass of carbon, in this case three carbons, is 36.03, by the mass of the entire formula, the molar mass, 60.094 in this case, and then times 100. If this percentage of carbon is 52.1%, then it's likely that this substance is propanol. But we didn't get that number. We got 60.0% carbon. So a certain substance that appears to have the properties similar to propanol, it is not possible that this substance is propanol because these two substances have different values for the percent carbon by mass. All right, well that represents the end of the mole and mole conversion practice quiz. I hope that my answers and explanations were helpful. Good luck studying for your quiz.